Okay, this is a video about me hopefully recommissioning my Enfield Bullet. Um, this Enfield Bullet is a 1986 model, but it's based um, almost entirely on the original 1953. It's made by a company called Enfield India, as you can see there. Um, how it came to be built by Enfield India is my understanding is that the bike was, uh, like I said, designed in 1953. They got a massive order from the Indian government and police force, I believe. So they were shipping them out to India in kits, and India were putting them together and sell them on. Um, by the time you got to 1960, Royal Enfield, England, decided that they would make a new version of the bullet and they sent all the tooling to make the old version out to India. In about 1970, Enfield went bust, uh, but the Indian part of the company, which had a very full order book, just continued making them. Um, and hence why in 1986, this one was built, um, imported into the UK, and I first put on the road in 1988 I believe this was a working bike when it went in the garage um, but the garage unfortunately uh, had a leaky roof I've now given up this garage and have pulled the Enfield back home and only now I can see what damage has been caused there's quite a lot of corrosion on the aluminium parts there's rust on the metal chromed parts um, yeah all chrome damage down there you can see where water's been coming through the roof onto the tank uh, unfortunately here was a battery charger which has rusted away actually as it was sat on the seat um, yeah, you can see the state of the corrosion down there on the um, primary drive cover. Um, yeah. So, um, a little bit about the bike. It's a um, 350cc four stroke engine. Um, like I say, designed in the early 1950s, but developed from an engine that was, I believe, uh, in production in the 1930s. Um, what's a little bit unusual by today's standards is everything is separate. So you've got the, you've got the engine here, and then you've got a completely separate primary drive and clutch, and that then connects to a completely separate gearbox. So all these are three separate items with three separate oil um, feeds um, so there's the level plug for the for the uh, clutch primary drive that's the oil filler for the engine and that's probably the oil filler for the gearbox at the rear back there um, originally in here there would have been a magneto but at some point in the bike's production they changed it to battery coil and that's why you've got this little tiny uh, points system in here um, it's got some unusual features. This here is a what they refer to as a duck bill pipe, and it's there to create a vacuum inside the engine. And unfortunately, the vacuum inside the engine, um, because of the way it's created, will occasionally blow oil out of the end of the pipe. And what they've done, which I think is quite clever, is they put the pipe in such a position that when it does blow out oil, it blows it onto the chain, thereby keeping the chain oiled. Um, this bike was one of the very last of the original designs um, after the late 80s they put some improvements through um, one of which was to move the points down to the crank crank case at the end of the crank um, uh, in order to improve timing um, the other side, I 
what they did was this on this bike this is a, an, an oil an air filter and what they did for some reason which i'm not 100 sure but they changed this just to a blank box moved the air filter into here um another thing they did at some point was this bike has two oil pumps there's one oil pump there and one oil pump there which work on pistons and the later bikes they changed it to what you would probably call more conventional um, mesh gear oil pumps um, should we note that the engine is dry sump what you've actually got here is an oil tank uh, and then what happens is uh, the first oil pump um, feeds the big end bearings the oil then gets splattered into the sump there is then a second oil pump a bigger one which pumps oil up here to both uh, rocker rocker bearings the oil then gets splashed all over there it then comes down the push rod tubes lubricates the cams and then ends up in this chest here and then because of these gears there's a set of gears one two three four i think up here because of the gears the oil then gets transported up and dropped back in the top of the tank now one of the problems that i know i am going to have for this bike is when i start it it's going to blow a hell of a lot of oil out and the reason is because this oil tank if you look at it now is empty but it was full and what's happened is it's wet sumped so the the oil that was in this tank has leaked past the past the pump and is now sitting in the bottom of the engine so when i attempt to start this engine the oil is just going to get splattered everywhere no doubt going to come out the exhaust in massive quantities and it's going to it's going to keep on doing that until the oil gets to back where it should be which is back in this tank um, more unusual features of this bike is that the gear, first of all the gear lives on the wrong side of the bike uh, this is on the English side as they would say um, but it's got this extra lever here and this is a neutral finder um, there's no neutral light on this bike but what there is is if it's in if it's in a gear like second or whatever and you put your heel on here it will instantly go to instantly go to neutral which is quite handy uh, ignition key here fairly conventional swinging arm twin shocks um, it's got a compressor sorry decompressor which I'm guessing is a hangover from when it used to have a magneto um, so you could s kill the engine basically um, but um, it's now used for finding doctor um, for when you're starting it it allows you to um, turn the engine over without too much grief um, fairly standard shoe brakes front and back um, another improvement I think the bike's got over the original 1952 1953 is it's got 12 volt electrics primarily because it had to run indicators by this point um, this is what they refer to as the sports star model um, not exactly sporty but it, uh, it did have a few differences to the normal bike in that it had slightly different advised forks it's got this instrument cluster here instead of the um, combined binnacle type headlight and speedometer and what have you um, and it's got locking fuel cap instead of a turny turny one um, this electrical gear, as far as I'm aware, was sourced from Austria, although it still does have some British touches like this light switch here. Now, originally, this light switch wasn't just a light switch, but as you turned it into the different modes, it also switched different coils in on the alternator because it was sort of like a balanced um, current sort of thing. Um, that's been changed now. I've now got a proper uh, regular rectifier in it 
um, taking care of the electrics, which is a lot better. Right, so that's, I think, me waffling on for long enough. I um, suppose I sp should start recommissioning it. Um, the first thing I need to do is put the battery on. Now, the battery, as far as I'm aware, is still good. And where it is at the moment is in here. A little solar panel here. And that's hopefully been charging this battery up. Yeah, there she goes. It, it says it's good anyway. Um, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to put that on. So that's job number one. Okay, so day two, and I'm obviously missing the nuts and bolts, but it doesn't matter because I'm getting electrical connection and all that because the brake light's stuck on. So why is the brake light stuck on? Is it this front switch? Doesn't seem to be making any difference. Of course it does, it's gone off. Okay, time to try the ignition. Now I'm a little bit sceptical here because I can't remember which way around this has got to turn, but here we go, try it. Alright, don't appear to be pulling any current. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and turn the engine over and see if we get movement. Okay, so we're up and running. In fact, this is a, a few months later. Uh, this is probably going to be the last run this bike's going to have this year. Um, I've had a few minor technical issues with it. Um, I took it out um, to Whitby. On the way back, it started cutting out at junctions and then later lost compression altogether. And I had to do a quick tap it set uh, and put the, put the gap back in the tappets. Um, not entirely sure why that happened, it might have been a bit of corrosion in the bearings and on the cams and things that's worn away and uh, resulted in a rapid change. Um, but since then it's been fine. Uh, you can see it's a bit, uh, bit oily wet but um, generally speaking it's, uh, it's doing okay. There's plenty of, plenty of oil in it, it's not going down. I mean it's gone down there obviously because the engine's running and it's on its side. Um, so that was that was one technical problem. Uh, another another issue uh, was that 
the brake switch totally gave up so I had to put a new one of those in which is fair enough and I also had some trouble with the indicator switch um, there was corrosion in it and I took all the corrosion out put back together and then had issues where the button was just sliding all over the place it wasn't clicking like it is now um, so I took it back again couldn't find anything wrong with it put it back together still the same and I was looking to buy a new switch assembly but unfortunately with this bike the switch assembly is actually part of the brake assembly which made it a bit more complicated so anyway, I give it a third go and found out that I actually lost a ball bearing out of it uh, so I bought a ball bearing 2mm put it back in and now it's fine and all the switch gears working great now uh, so that was an issue oh and, and a big one was um, I lost uh, electrical power and that the alternator wasn't charging um, and I found out that it was the Chinese uh, regulator rectifier that I'd put that I installed had failed about 10 years ago I put it in and it had failed um, I think it failed pretty much at the same time that I was slightly ever so over enthusiastic of going through a Ford that was perhaps a bit deeper than I thought it was and I think it must have gotten inundated with water and it didn't like it and it's failed. Um, I've moved the regulator rectifier now into the battery box so it's got a bit of protection and it's running nice and cold in there, it's stone cold. So that's good. Uh, other than that, she's been running fine. Um, I'll give her a proper look over uh, during the winter months. Um, I'll change all the oils in it. Um, maybe find out where that oil might be seeping from on this side um, or maybe not you know, I think people expect British designed bikes if not built in England and certainly designed to, to leak a bit um, probably could do with a polish as well I mean basically all I've done is just wipe the white furry corrosion off it um, so yeah so that's it um, pulled out of storage after number of years, ridden it a few times, probably done about three or four hundred mile on it uh, and it's absolutely fine. Um, it's a great little bike, it's got the laziest engine in um, but it cruises along, well I've been cruising all day at 60 in it, on it and it's fine, you know, and you're only on about half throttle. Um, not that opening the throttle is going to make much difference like, but um, but it, it rides along quite smoothly. Uh, so that's it, it's the um, Enfield India Bullet 350.